Hi everyone, my name is Lisa. Welcome to this class. Today we are going to explore the history, epidemiology and risk factors for developing Parkinson's disease. We hope you enjoy it and, please, pause the video as many time you need. Our class plan includes the general vision of Parkinson's disease history and first definitions, talking a little bit about James Parkinson, Jean Martin Charcot, and their fellows. After that, we are going to explore the Hone and Yar staging system, the epidemiology, and projections to the future. Finally, we will talk about risk factors. So, let's start. Parkinson's disease is one of the most common movement disorders and represents the second most common neurodegenerative disease of the central nervous system, after Alzheimer's disease. Parkinson's disease was originally described by James Parkinson in his essay on the shaking palsy from 1817, carefully outlining the major motor signs of the disease that are still considered the hallmarks of PD. They are, bradykinesia, rigidity and tremor. In addition, several non-motor symptoms of the disease may also be present. Backing to 1817, Parkinson's disease was first medically described as a neurological syndrome by James Parkinson, even though fragments of Parkinsonism could be found in earlier descriptions. In few words, James Parkinson captured the clinical picture. Involuntary tremulous motion, with lessened muscular power, in parts not in action and even when supported. With a propensity to bend the trunk forward, and to pass from a walking to a running pace, the senses and intellects being uninjured. Jean Martin Charcot, in his teaching at the Salpetriere over 50 years later, was more thorough in his description and distinguished bradykinesia as a separate cardinal feature of the illness. Long before rigidity actually develops, patients have significant difficulty performing ordinary activities. This problem relates to another cause. In some of the various patients I have showed you, you can easily recognize how difficult it is for them to do things even though rigidity or tremor is not the limiting feature. Instead, even a cursory exam demonstrates that their problem relates more to slowness in execution of movement rather than to real weakness. In spite of tremor, a patient is still able to do most things, but he performs them with remarkable slowness. Between the thought and the action there is a considerable time lapse. One would think neural activity can only be affected after remarkable effort. Charcot and his fellows describe the clinical spectrum of the disease, noting two prototypes, the tremorous and the rigid slash akinetic form. They described in full detail the arthritic changes, dysautonomia, and pain that can accompany Parkinson's disease. Charcot was also the first to suggest the use of the term Parkinson's disease rejecting the earlier designation of paralysis adjutants or shaking palsy because he recognized that individuals with Parkinson's disease are not markedly weak and do not necessarily have tremor. William Gowers, working in London, contributed to an important study of Parkinson's disease demographics in his Manual of Diseases of the Nervous System. In this document, he described his experience with 80 patients in the 1880s. He correctly identified the slight male predominance of the disorder and studied the joint deformities typical of the disease. Known for his descriptive prose, Gowers offered one of the most memorable similes regarding Parkinsonian tremor. The movement of the fingers at the metacarpal phalangeal joints is similar to that by which orientals beat their small drums. Further clinical descriptions and studies of the pathologic changes related to Parkinson's disease were predominantly reported by the French Neurologic School. Richer and Mesh in 1895 provided clinical and morphological details of the progressive stages of the Parkinsonian disability and the former provided drawings and statues that remain among the most important pictorial documents related to Parkinson's disease. Babinski commented on the strange motor fluctuations intrinsic to the disease itself. Brissot first proposed damage to the substantia nigra as the anatomical seat of Parkinson's disease. The most complete pathologic analysis of Parkinson's disease in the clear delineation of the brainstem lesions was performed in 1953 by Greenfield and Bosenket. The morbidity and clinical progression of Parkinson's disease were studied in the important article by Hone and Yar in which their internationally recognized staging system was first introduced. This time-honored staging system is anchored in the distinction between unilateral, stage 1, disease and bilateral disease, stages 2 to 5, and the development of postural reflex impairment, stage 3, as a key turning point in the disease's clinical significance. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease. In 2016, 
6.1 million individuals worldwide had Parkinson's disease and the number of individuals with Parkinson's disease in 2016 was two to four times higher than in 1990. Over the past generation, the number of individuals with Parkinson's disease globally has more than doubled to over 6 million. Of all the neurological disorders included in Global Burden of Disease Study, Parkinson's disease was the fastest growing. Aging populations contributed to much of that growth as crude prevalence rates increased by about 74% from 1990 to 2016 and age standardized prevalence rates increased by about 22%. In another study, the authors made projections based on the population and observed that, in a conservative view, the number of people with PD in the world can double, reaching 14.2 million people. The cause of Parkinson's disease is still unknown in most of the cases. Over the last years, genetic risk factors have been identified. First-degree family members of affected patients have a two- to three-fold increased risk to develop the disease compared to subjects in the general population or controls. Only 10 to 15 percent of PD cases are early-onset familial PD, while the remaining cases are idiopathic, pointing to an important role of non-genetic and environmental factors in the PD pathogenesis. Exposure to environmental toxins can cause dopaminergic cell death. The accumulation of heavy metals in the SN enhances the risk of developing PD. The effect of exposure to heavy metals could increase oxidative stress in dopaminergic cells, leading to PD. Numerous studies have focused on the inverse correlation between cigarette smoking and PD risk. In meta-analyses, smoking was protective against PD. An inverse correlation was reported between the number of cigarettes per day, the number of years of smoking, the number of pack years and the risk for PD as well as a correlation between the number of years since quitting and the risk for PD. Depending on the studies, this effect remained associated or not 25 years after quitting smoking. A remaining association argues against inverse causality. A 25% risk reduction for PD has been reported for coffee users with a linear dose response according to a meta-analysis. Caffeine, acting as an adenosine receptor, A2A, antagonist, is believed to be the component responsible for this putative protective effect of coffee. However, these observations rely again only on toxin-based preclinical models. Several studies have shown an association with professional pesticide exposure in men and late onset PD, mostly with insecticide, in particular organochlorines, with a dose-effect relationship. In France, PD is recognized as a professional disease for farmers professionally exposed to pesticides. However, two recent meta-analyses point to the high heterogeneity and inconsistency among studies. Some polymorphisms in the multidrug resistance protein 1 gene, MDR1 or ABCB1, a G protein involved in operation of xenobiotic-slash-drugs from the blood-brain barrier, are associated with a specific vulnerability for PD in individuals exposed to pesticides. This is a compelling illustration of gene-environment interaction in the pathogenesis of PD. Several meta-analyses that have focused on diabetes and the risk for PD have reported inconsistent results, no association, an increased risk, or a protective effect. No association was found between BMI, obesity, overweight and PD risk, while individuals with PD have lower weight and BMI than control subjects. A meta-analysis has demonstrated that PD patients have lower plasma uric acid levels than healthy subjects. Urate acts as rosin peroxynitrite scavenger and reduces cell death and mitochondrial dysfunction in cell cultures exposed to MPTP, iron ions or glutamate. Indeed, lower plasma uric acid levels in PD may be the consequence of its consumption because of increased oxidative stress. In a case control study, anemia was found more frequently in the medical history of people with PD than controls, even after adjustment for confounding risk factors. The link between anemia and PD is not understood but may involve iron deficiency or an extra neurological dysfunction of alpha-synuclein, which is highly enriched in red blood cells. Indeed, anemia itself is probably not directly increasing the risk for PD, as no association is established between chronic anemia, such as thalassemia and PD, while newly identified anemia is associated with PD. An association between personality traits and PD was shown in some studies, anxiety and pessimism were associated with an increased risk for PD, but not depressive traits, a confounding factor, such as a genetic susceptibility to personality traits and PD, an early disease state or a causal risk factor were proposed explanations. An association was further observed between depression and increased risk for PD. The association was stronger when depression occurred closer to the diagnosis of PD. 
it was concluded that depression may either be an early sign of PD or share common etiological factors with PD. PD is more frequent in men than in women. As one explanation of this observation, estrogen was suggested to be protective against PD, but the results of the different studies remain controversial. For instance, oophorectomy increases the risk for PD, with a stronger risk in women who have a younger age at oophorectomy. In a meta-analysis, ibuprofen was shown to reduce PD risk, with no effect of NSAID as a class. Ibuprofen is a ligand of PARG and may thereby exert anti-aptotic and antioxidative effects. Another meta-analysis showed a protective effect of non-aspirin NSAID and a negative effect of aspirin use. In summary, in this class we discussed. Parkinson's disease represents the second most common neurodegenerative disease of the central nervous system, after Alzheimer's disease. Since 1817, countless scientists have contributed to the knowledge we have today about Parkinson's disease. Of all the neurological disorders included in the Global Burden of Disease study, Parkinson's disease was the fastest growing. Only 10 to 15 percent of PD cases are early onset familial PD, while the remaining cases are idiopathic. Environmental risk factors play an important role in the development of Parkinson's disease. Smoking cigarettes, drink coffee and use ibuprofen appears to be a protective factor. Exposure to pesticides, anxiety, and pessimism appear to be risk factors. PD is more frequent in men than in women. Thank you for watching. Remember to do the quiz, it will help you memorize the content. Next class, we will talk about the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. Enjoy the course. See you.